Hey GED students, one of my patrons, Kia, sent me this question on Patreon. So first of all, I just want to start off with, she got this from a website that's not mine, another GED prep website, and this is one of the reasons I don't recommend uh, other websites. This particular uh, thing we're going to do right now, you can totally pass your GED without being able to do. Um, although solving systems of equations is listed as a GED skill, the style of problem that they have on there um, is always this particular style that's uh, simpler than this. And we can use a guess and check method for that. We don't have to learn this particular method. However, when you go on to college, which is what I told Kia, you will need to be able to solve systems of equations. Uh, you'll need more skills than just guessing and checking a multiple choice answer. Um, and so they teach three different ways to solve systems of equations. Once you get to college, you'll learn a graphing method, um, a method known as elimination, and then this method, substitution. So in order to prepare you guys well for college, even if we don't necessarily see this on the GED, let's go ahead and tackle it. So first of all, it says solve the system of equations. What are we talking about here? Well, notice what I have below. I don't just have one equation. I have two equations. And look at those two equations. I don't just have one variable, one letter. I have two variables. I have an X and a Y. And that's what I mean when I say a system of equation uh, equations. It's more than one equation that use more than one variable. And what we'll find is that the X for both of them is the same and the Y for both of them is the same. And that's what I'm trying to say. What X value and Y value would make both of these equations true? Now, I love the substitution method when I have a problem that looks like this. I don't always like to use it, but let me show you what I mean here. Let's get a different color so we can check this out. But here's what I notice. X is all by itself in this first particular equation. Uh, this equation is what we call solved for X. Now, a lot of you guys would say to me, Kate, this isn't solved for X because I don't just see a number on the other side. Well, Yes, it is. It's solved for X as simply as this equation is going to get. I might not know exactly what X is, but X is equal to all that jazz, 22 minus 3Y. Now, the reason I like it like this is because that means I now have two names for X. I could call X X, or I could call him this equivalent expression. The other side is equal. It's equivalent. So I could just as easily call X 22 minus 3y. Now you might say, well, why would I do that, Kate? 22 minus 3y is so much more complicated than x. Well, why I would do that is so that in the other equation, I can get just one letter. It's a really big problem that I have two letters. In the first equation, I have an x and a y. In the second equation, I have an x and a y. That's a problem and I want to solve it. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the next equation and everywhere I see x, I'm going to trade it out. That's called substitution, guys. We might not have done problems this complex on the GED, but man, do we ever use substitution, trading out one thing for another equivalent thing. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Every time I see x, I'm going to substitute it out for this other equivalent expression, 22 minus 3y. So let's do it. Let's take my back my blue over here. So I had a two, so I'm still gonna have a two, but I'm not gonna have X anymore. I'm gonna trade X out. Let's go ahead and trade X out for what we said it would be. And notice I'm using parentheses because it's an expression with more than one term. You know, there's a couple of things adding and subtracting here. And so I need parentheses. So I just replaced X with this equivalent expression. And now I'm gonna keep going, just writing the rest of this equation the way I had it. So I had a two, a two, and then an X, and now I need the minus, minus, and now the seven, and you might say, what do I do with the Y? You just leave the Y there. <laughs> uh, that was my goal. I was trying to get only Ys into this equation instead of Xs. And now this might look uglier to you, but it looks a 
ton simpler to me. It looks simpler to me because even though it's a little ugly, ooh, I just lost a number, even though it's a little ugly, I only have Y's. I don't have X's anymore, which means I can do what I do in the land of algebra and solve to figure out what number Y needs to be, okay? So first goal is usually when we're solving an equation is to simplify anything we can simplify. And I sure do see some simplification I can do on the left-hand side. This right here, two shoved up against that parentheses with 22 minus 3y in it, well, that's multiplication. I'm gonna go ahead and do that multiplication. Let's pass out multiplication. 2 times 22 is 44. And remember, multiplication passes out to every term in the parentheses. So I'm also going to do 2 times negative 3y. Well, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And if I multiply with a y, I just have a y at the end of my term. And now the multiplication stops when the parentheses stops. So my negative 7y did not get affected by that. And of course, there's no simplification to do on the right-hand side. Negative 8 is just a number. I'm going to leave it there. Okay, I started to simplify, but guess what? I still have some more simplification I can do. Straightforward math, obeying the signs. Do you see it? I've got to combine like terms. If I have any terms that are the same kinds of things, they're like, like here. This is a y term, negative 6y. And this is a y term, negative 7y. Whenever I have like terms, I can combine them. So let's do that. There are no other constant terms. Those are plain old numbers. So my 44 will stay 44. But I can do negative 6y minus 7y. Do it in your GED calculator. If you struggle with negatives, you can do just the negative 6 minus 7 in there to see what your coefficient, your number, is going to have to be. But negative 6 minus 7 will give you negative 13. And negative 13 what? Well, if you were adding, subtracting y's, you're counting up how many y's you have. You have negative 13 y's. So I combine that. Um, and let's see, all I have left then is the equal, the right-hand side, which again is not gonna get any simpler. Lovely, now I didn't give myself enough space over here, so let's move this over. 44 minus 13 y is equal to negative eight. Awesome. Now I'm done with all the simplifying I can do. I can't do this subtraction on the left-hand side, 44 minus 13y, because those terms are not like. One is a plain old number, 44, and one is a y term, negative 13y. We can only add and subtract like terms, and so I am just going to go ahead and start solving, working to get my letter by itself. Now remember, to move anything that's adding or subtracting with y uh, before you start moving things that are multiplying, dividing. So I'm actually going to move this 44 first. Now a lot of students aren't sure how to move the 44. Uh, do I add? Do I subtract? Remember, you're trying to make it zero out. So since that's a positive 44, there's no sign in front of it, it's positive, I'm going to subtract 44. And I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides when it comes to an equation. And let's see what my new equation will be. Now 44 minus 44 really did zero out, so that's gone. But be careful, this little minus in front of the 13y, that guy, belongs to that 13. So we still have negative 13y. And that's going to be equal to, and again, pick up your calculator if you struggle with negatives. We've got enough to think about with all this algebra. So negative 8 minus 44, let's see, it should give me negative 52. And I'm almost done now. My y is almost alone, but I've got to get rid of that negative 13. Now, really common error here. Don't you do it. A lot of students will try to add 13. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's a negative 13, but this, this number is not subtracting with y. See how it's shoved against y? It is multiplying, so I'm going to divide away the negative 13. Divide by exactly what you want to get rid of. Now, it can do whatever I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides, so let's use the same exact operation, divide, and the same exact number, negative 13. And then I should be able to figure out here what y is equal to. Because multiplying and dividing by negative 13 cancel, y will be alone. 
And so let's see, negative 52 divided by negative 13. Hey, that's positive four. Again, do it in your calculator if you don't believe me. Now, so many people are so excited. We're done, Kate. This was hard work, but we did our substitution. We did our simplification. We solved. We're so good, but be careful. I didn't just want you to solve for Y. I wanted you to solve the entire system. Solving the system means not only do I know what y is, but I know what any other variable is in the equation. And y was not my only variable. y was not my only letter. I also had an x. Now you might say, oh my gosh, Kate, do I have to do this whole process over again now the other way to get x? No, no, no. Don't worry. It's much simpler than that because now I know y. If y is 4, I can use that to find x. Okay, let's give ourselves a little bit of space here. I'm going to erase this work under here because I want to look back up at my original equations. You always go back to your original equations to figure out any new values. Okay, so we had this lovely equation at first that told us how to find x. It said if you'd like to find x, take 22 and subtract 3y. Now, that didn't mean a lot to us before because we didn't know what y was, but we know now. We know that y is 4. We just solved for that. We just figured that out. So now that we know what y is, it's going to be a whole lot easier to find x. Again, I'm going to use substitution. So what will x be? x will be equal to 22 minus 3, yes, but y is not a mystery anymore. Instead of just writing y, I can again use parentheses and substitute in 4 where I once saw y. And now there's no more letters here on the right hand side. It's just some number crunching to do to figure out what x is equal to. So x is going to be equal to uh, order of operations that I should multiply first. So I'll do 3 times 4. Um, and negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 or minus 12. And then, of course, 22 minus 12 is 10. So now I know both of the variables' values. I know that x is 10 and y is 4. I've solved the system now, the system of equations, because I know what all the variables are equal to. Now, you should know for your college class as well that there's a few different ways to write this answer. Um, Probably the easiest way is just in two sentences. That's what this is, a mathematical sentence. I say y is 10. I mean, sorry, <laughs> x is 10 and y is 4. Really simple way to write that. Most of you guys are used to that uh, when we're solving equations, but it's not the only way to write that. We have basically a point. We have an x value and we have a y value. So another common way to write the answer to this would be as a point. Now remember when you write points, your x value comes first, so I would write 10, and your y value comes second, so I would write four. So another way that you could just express this answer, it says the same thing, just in another way, is the point 10, four. All right, that's a 10, four, good buddy. <laughs> that was a joke right there. Um, <laughs> It's just like when I teach my real classes. It's just me laughing at my own jokes. Okay, you guys, um, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it on the comment in the comments. Um, if you're wondering about the other two methods for solving equations that I mentioned that you need to know for college, um, the elimination method and graphing, I do have videos of both of those up on YouTube as well. So go ahead, check those out. And um, again, if you feel in a little over your head, don't worry, go check out my cheat method of solving equations, as I call it, that I do teach for the GED. That's basically just guess and check. Take one of the multiple choice answers, plug it in, and see if it works. It's a great method, and it'll always work on your GED. All right, you guys, happy learning.